got something here that's quite unusual. In fact, I'll go further than that and say it's unique because it's a master tape. In fact, it's not just one master tape, it's a number of different master tapes all spliced together and spooled on a ten and a half inch reel. The recordings are of the audio portion of advertisements that would have played on British television and possibly in the cinema during the 1960s. And there's a number of still familiar jingles on here, albeit different takes of them, some of which probably haven't been heard since it was originally recorded. So I hope to play some of those to you during the course of this video, but that's not the most interesting thing perhaps about this. When you start looking into who recorded these and where they were recorded, it weaves an interesting tale that links Heinz Beans with James Bond, the Beatles and a galaxy far, far away. So if that isn't enough build up for a video, I don't know what is. So the first obstacle we've got to get through before we can do anything else is get the sound off this tape. It's a quarter inch, two track, 15 inch per second tape and I've got a quarter inch, four track, seven and a half inch per second reel to reel player. And therefore it sounds like this. <laughs> So this was back when Jabba the Hutt was doing advertisements. No, of course, it's just playing too slowly. So what we're going to do, I'm going to record the audio over the headphone socket, played at that speed into this Sony PCM recorder. And then once I've got the WAV file, I can put that into my computer using the software Audacity. I'm going to add those two tracks together. You can see we've got one loud track and one quiet track. That's because the four tracks and the two tracks don't quite line up right. However, if we merge those two together into one mono track, that's going to give us a pretty good approximation of what it should sound like and then the next thing I'm going to have to do is speed that up by a factor of two so that the seven and a half inch per second recording plays back at the original 15 inch per second speed and then finally I'm just going to boost the audio up a little bit so that we maximize out the sound. Right now we can have a listen to it so let's have a go. Take 12. From time immemorial the Englishman has been a dedicated sportsman stalking his quarry through the forest and open places of his estate. Now you can give yourself a rich green lawn without weeds, with Fison's Evergreen 80. Don't take it out on your lawn. Take the weeds out as you feed with Fison's Evergreen 80. Now, whilst it's good to hear that, it's not particularly interesting, and there are 14 takes of it. I'm not going to go through all those, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick and choose things off this tape, the things that are more historically interesting or unusual than other things. So let's just move on straight away, skip past that, and go on to the Heinz Super Day advertisements. <laughs> It's a Heinz, Super Day, Heinz, Super Day. It's a Heinz, Super Day, Heinz, Super Day, Heinz, Super Day. I find that a little bit haunting, but let's wind things back a moment and just look at where this tape originates from. CTS, Cine Tele Sound Studios Limited of London. Notice the client there, JJ Jingles. JJ Jingles is Johnny Johnston, the king of the jingles. He's one of a number of people that came together to form CTS in the late 1950s with the intention of making jingles for television advertisements. 
Now, CTS Studios would be used to record the audio for the advertisements, the filming of the advertisements would be done separately, and then that would be projected on a screen at the back of the CTS Studios, and this is a photo of the studio that we're talking about. So the musicians would match up the recording to the film and get the timing just right, and then mix it down to the master tapes, which is what I've got here. Now, if you've got a setup like that, obviously you're going to start doing soundtracks for movies, and that's something that they then got into and I'll flick through a few films here and you should be able to recognize a number of these names a number of big films from the 60s especially all the James Bonds from the 1960s so just think all those familiar theme tunes were recorded by CTS Studios in London in that studio that I just showed you so clearly we're talking about a group of people at the top of their game here, and that's coming across even on things like jingles for soups. This one sounds particularly cinematic. Now, UK viewers might have noticed a name popping out at the top of there. The client is Mitchell Monkhouse. And yes, Monkhouse is Bob Monkhouse, who was a familiar household name for decades in the UK. Now, along with Malcolm Mitchell, he too had a bit of a side company where they did advertisements. And their client on that one was Heinz. In fact, I'm not too sure, but the next advertisement I'm going to play you does sound a little bit like it's Bob Monkhouse doing the voiceover to me. So let's just have a listen. Soup! Super! Super Bingo! Heinz Super, Super Bingo. Bingo! And it's eyes down for... 57 fur coats. 57 movie sets. 57 groceries for a year. 57 holidays of your choice. 228 prizes must be won, each worth £200. Buy Heinz Soup, pick up a leaflet and play... Heinz Super, Super Bingo! Bingo. Now, of course, I've only got the audio portion of these advertisements here. There would be a film that goes alongside these. And I managed to find that film for the Heinz Tomato Soup advertisement. I can't show it to you, but I've got a link in the video description if you're interested. But it's a circus-themed soup commercial, which means the voiceover makes a lot more sense when you know that. Anyway, let's have a listen. Heinz proudly presents the greatest glow on earth. Fabulous Heinz soup, featuring today tomatoes, cream, the spices of the Orient in Heinz cream of tomato soup. It's the favourite treat for all the family. Heinz soup, the greatest glow on earth. Amazing Heinz soup, now starring big and beefy Heinz oxtail soup. It builds the family up a treat. Heinz soup, the greatest glow on earth. It's a Heinz, Super Day Heinz, Super Day Heinz, Super Day. Now, the next thing I'm going to play you might well be the most historically significant thing that's on this tape. Again, it's JJ Jingles working for Heinz Beans this time. And notice, of course, it's the master tape. There's a number of different takes of it. And interestingly, in the UK, Beans Means Heinz has been voted the best advertising slogan ever. And you can see here, it was first devised in 1967 over a pint of beer in a pub. Well, let's have a look where my recording's from. 1967. So this possibly might be the very first recording of Beans Means Heinz. Let's have a listen. Jack's on his way to find out why Beans Means Heinz. Jack's on his way to find out why Beans Means Heinz. Heinz take care in every way, so mums all over Britain say, Beans means Heinz. One, two. I've got 
to assume that the Jack's on his way part of that is referring to the Jack and the Beanstalk thing. But moving away from that, let's look at the engineer behind some of these recordings, EAT. Now, there's a number of different engineers on here, but EAT is Eric Arthur Tomlinson. He's perhaps the most famous one of all. He's got a resume that you would die for. Here he is at his mixing desk. He was a chap that did the mixing on the tracks and set the microphones up, very much like a George Martin type character at this studio. He was the only chap who's recorded Frank Sinatra on a studio based recording outside of the US when he recorded for three days at the CTS studios. In fact, let's just have a look at some of Eric's other work while we listen to some music that I've taken off this reel. Unfortunately, Eric is no longer with us, but he's left us with a heck of a legacy. I can't think there's many people out there that haven't heard the soundtrack to one of those films. Now, let's move back to Jingles for a moment. This was recorded in the mid-60s for Kellogg's, and I notice there's two different mixes on this that have quite a different feel to them. You see, the mix of the first one sounds very much like the sort of early 60s, like the Beatles looked here, and then the later one sounds like the latter kind of part of the 60s, where it's a little bit more hippie-ish. Let's have a listen. Eight little packets of variety, eight great breakfasts for the family, and if cornflakes and frosties should accidentally. There'd be six little packets of variety, six different packets standing in a row. Special cake and rice krispies, they're the first to go. Sugar slats so inviting, and bicycles for me. Now there's eight empty packets of variety. Eight empty packets? Go and buy some more. You've got to love the fact they say go and buy some more at the end there. You don't get any more direct than that in an advertisement. But let's just go back to the Beatles for a second. So in 1965, the Beatles did their famous concert at Shea Stadium. As you might be aware, the sound of the crowd was just so loud they couldn't hear their own instruments or what each other was singing. And therefore, the recordings of that aren't quite good enough. So they wanted to release the footage, of course, of the concert, as well as presumably bring some records out. They needed to overdub some of the sections that they'd recorded live at the show. And to do that, they went to CTS. The reason being, of course, CTS have that screen up on the wall so they could play back the footage of the concert happening and try and get their instruments and singing to match up with the images that they were seeing. So that's an interesting fact that the Beatles also recorded at CTS. Right, so let's get back to playing some jingles off this tape. Now we're going to go through some for Wheat Sheaf Bread, as well as the co-op. A little bit different to the Beatles, but let's just have a listen. Come cooperative shopping for delicious, fresh Wheat Sheaf, the best of bread. One, two. Get it from your co-op, or from the van instead. Oh, make sure it's Wheat Sheaf, it's good, fresh bread. The best of bread. One, two. Get it from the co-op man, remember what he said. Oh, where there's a wheat sheep, there's the best of bread. Cooperation, cooperation could be working for you, aha. Uh -huh. Cooperation serving the nation. Why not let it serve you? You can get everything from a pint of milk to a holiday by the sea. A loaf of bread or a suit for Ted. Everything's got the divvy and cooperation. Cooperation serves you in many ways. And as you grow up, you can bank on the co-op to serve you the rest of your days. 
Well, it's clear to see that the co-op will be here come rain or shine. You can be sure it's true, that's why I'm telling you, sign on the dotted line. Now you remember cooperation, cooperation, now it's working for you, uh-huh. When you shop at this sign, everything's going fine, that's the co-op for you, you own it, and it's working for you, uh-huh. Now, the next advertisement is from 1971, and it's for Baby Sham, which, if you don't know, is an alcoholic drink made from fermented pears, which is also known as a perry. Now, there's two different versions of this recording, so listen out for the difference in the wording, one of which would land them in a bit of hot water. I also think the tune on this is particularly funky. Sham, baby sham, the genuine English Perry. Baby sham, baby sham, the genuine champagne Perry. So clearly, when they went in the recording studio, they weren't too sure whether they were going to go with. English Perry or Champagne Perry. In the end, they went with Champagne Perry, and that's the one they used on the advertisements. And I bet they wish they'd gone with English Perry in the end, because the champagne industry ended up taking Baby Sham to court for using the Champagne name. For some reason, they didn't win that case, but it would have been a lot less hassle, I think, for Baby Sham if they'd just picked the other mix that said English Perry. Now, it seems that CTS didn't just record jingles for the UK market. Here's one for Germany. Now, unfortunately, on a scale of yes and no, whether I can understand German, my score is nine. So hopefully someone from Germany can explain what this one's about. Miteinander. 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 Miteinander Karten genießen. Das ist der neue Stil, wie wir ihn lieben. Des reichen und reifen, den sympathisch klaren, den vollen Geschmack der Karten genießen. Miteinander Karten genießen. Aus Freude am guten Geschmack. So that's it. That's the last thing on the tape. Now, I've jumped around a bit, but I've picked out the best things that were on there. So what happened to CTS Studios? Well, unfortunately, they closed down in 2010. But they had a pretty good run at it from the late 1950s all the way up to 2010, recording some of the best known soundtracks around. In fact, one of the last projects they worked on was the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So they were doing great stuff right up until the end. It's just unfortunate they're not around anymore. In fact, a lot of the people that are named on this box aren't around. So thanks to them, thanks to CTS Studios for providing so much entertainment over the years. Now, there's just one little thing that I need to mention. When I was playing the tape, it got to the end and that was it. I put the recording in the computer. When I went to rewind it, I realised that there was still a little bit of tape left on the first reel. It had split at one of the joins and it had finished, but it hadn't quite finished. There was just a little tiny bit of tape left there. So I quickly taped it together, started the recorder again. And despite the fact the box says there's nothing there, there was a recording on there at seven and a half inches per second, which is uh, different to the rest of the tapes. I don't know why it's on there, but let's just have a listen to it. Listen to this radio spot. You've been listening to John Lennon's new album, Walls and Bridges, available now on Apple, Records and Tapes. Thank you, Ringo.
So we're going right back round to a Beatles connection again here, or ex-Beatles in this case. We've got John Lennon and Ringo Starr on a radio advertisement for John Lennon's 1974 Walls and Bridges album. Now, there are a whole series of advertisements. Listen to this radio spot, watch this television advertisement, and that's just one of them. I don't know whether it's a master recording. With it being at 7.5 inches per second, I doubt it. I don't know why it's being blanked out on the back of the box, but that's part of the fun of this. You never know what you're going to find on an old tape that you get off eBay. You never know, it might be a Lost Beatles recording. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Well that was rubbish. I had to watch adverts to watch a video about adverts. So what was it about? Yeah, it was some nonsense about master tapes or something. That reminds me of the time I was working at the BBC in the archives department. And we had to put all the old tapes on shelves from A to Z. And when we got round to W, we found we'd run out of space. So what did you do? Well, I took the decision to bin most of the Doctor Who's because I figured, since he was a time traveller, if they really wanted the tapes, they could go back in time to the day before I threw them away. Makes sense. Funny thing is, next day we found out they should have been filed under D for Doctor, not W for Who, and the whole D shelf was empty. We could have kept the lot. Oh, we laughed about that one for days. <laughs>